Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back with your daily crypto news and analysis. And I do apologize if I sound a little bit, you know, different or if I don't sound too energetic. I'm kind of feeling a little bit under the weather right now. And I did say that I wasn't going to be recording tonight, but I figured I need to update you guys and uh, pretty much get it out of the way, you know, because tomorrow who knows how I will wake up. So overall, I did want to get ahead of the schedule. So let's just jump into it. Let's talk about the market. Let's talk about um, XRP and some updates within the SEC lawsuit, as well as a few other things as well. So first off, let's address the market. So we are seeing Bitcoin still fighting that resistance around the 63K market. Tried to do another run today. Got rejected fairly, you know, reasonably, but it is what it is. Today is Tuesday, so we are going to be watching for that ETF launch. That could be the, you know, sell the news sort of aspect that we're pretty much watching for. Uh, I think that if we don't, you know, drop today, I think that that will kind of invalidate the ETF sell-off sort of idea. So overall, we're going to be watching Bitcoin fairly closely today. Now, I will say this. Um, I have been watching XRP kind of sit stable for the last couple of days, and there's not too much price action movement on it at all. Uh, it is kind of in a nice little channel of, you know, consolidation. So, you know, my eyes are obviously on the XRP Bitcoin price chart right now as we do kind of just range on uh, within the entire market because, you know, most altcoins are kind of taking a little bit of a hit while Bitcoin dominance is rising, while Bitcoin is kind of just sitting stable a little bit and kind of moving up and trying to retest that major resistance, but it is getting rejected. So obviously we have to watch very closely for those nice juicy buys on our altcoins. So with that being said, I do want to give you guys this tweet. Now, this goes all the way back to August 31st, and this is actually coming from XRP Darren on Twitter. But this is actually, you know, this this video speaks loud words if you actually listen in. Stand in stark contrast to the actions of recent prior CFTC chairman. I believe that the CFTC's grim budget situation today is largely attributable to the irresponsible stewardship of the prior administration. Under the leadership or the leaderships of Chairman Gary Gensler and Chairman Tim Massad, years of unrealistic budget requests, fiscal mismanagement, and political gamesmanship with Capitol Hill damaged our agency's reputation and our credibility with appropriators who, when now faced with choices between competing priorities, remember those affronts like yesterday. And again, you know, when we're talking about this, this is before Gary Gensler was actually even the head of the SEC. Now, this is talking about, you know, obviously ruining reputation and, you know, credibility of this organization. And when we're talking about this, it also goes hand in hand with what's happening with the SEC because they are also ruining the idea of credibility from the SEC standpoint, as well as kind of stifling innovation, as well as picking and choosing winners and losers. And I don't like that from the overall standpoint of, you know, being an investor in an asset like XRP. It's not the idea of me being biased or me wanting, you know, XRP to go to the moon or anything but like that. It's the idea of me looking at the overall time period of the events that have unfolded up until this point. And if you guys are unaware of those time periods or the overall facts, you guys could go over to John E. Deaton's web or uh, not his website, but his Twitter. And you could essentially break down everything that has happened from the day one span, you know, going all the way back to Clayton, as well as with Lubin and Consensus, as well as all the Ethereum and Bitcoin stuff. And this breaks down everything in regards to the XRP overall case. And I think that this is great to also account for a lot of things that are happening right now, you know, with the picking and choosing of Ripple and Ethereum with no overall basis on if they are a security or not there's no clear answer on that and of course why would there be right because we do see here one river bets one billion dollar on bitcoin and ethereum and then of course we do see here clayton goes to one river to push bitcoin and ethereum so what do you think is happening here i mean it's not it doesn't take a rocket scientist to connect the dots here it's fairly easy to understand what has been happening behind closed doors honestly speaking you know, when we're talking about Ripple, you know, meeting with the SEC, the SEC having full knowledge of Ripple and also MoneyGram's overall deal, deals with, you know, selling to the open market and stuff. You know, how could we be seeing XRP being a security when even Coinbase got, you know, an approval to list XRP through their securities framework? It's just comical to me, to say the least. Now, talking about Coinbase, 
we actually have a little bit of you know an article coming from Coinbase themselves. Now we do see our OMG. This is from March 2018, two months before Hinman's speech. There are more than 1,400 currencies and tokens available, yet we limit our trading to four that have regulatory clarity being determined by regulators: Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, and Ethereum. Isn't that funny to see, right? And of course, you know Bitcoin is labeled as well. But we also see here. That's when we're talking about everything within Coinbase. We already know that Coinbase went to SEC to the SEC in 2018 and 2019, talking about XRP, talking about listing XRP. They got confirmation that it is totally fine. Now we also got confirmation throughout this entire trial, though, that um, you know these exchanges were able to sell XRP, even though. Right, even though they have the speculation going on behind closed doors, but they were allowed to sell XRP because it was not an illegal transaction. Why aren't they, you know, relisting it? But also, I understand it from Coinbase's side. You know, they don't want to, you know, run into any problems down the road. But we also see here interesting take from Coinbase concerning XRP was declared a virtual currency in 2015, and that is the truth. Shout out to Moon, uh, Moon Lambo. And again, when we're talking about a lot of things happening within this market, it all comes comes back to the exchanges, it all comes back to the exchanges and also even Ripple meeting with the SEC in regards to what they were going to do in regards to their actions. And it's funny to me to see all of this unfolding in front of our eyes in a negative aspect, pretty much going back on everything that the SEC has said and approved. It's just comical to me to say the least. Now, we also look at this. Now, I tweeted out eight hours ago. I said crypto assets and companies are being adopted and utilized for CBDCs and digital infrastructure of cash on a day to day basis. Yet here we are in a world where the SEC of the US wants to stifle that same innovative technology. And this is the truth, right? We are seeing that happening on a day to day basis right now with picking, uh, you know, winners and losers. And Brad Garlinghouse summed it up fairly easily for us. Listen closely. I think it's, it's, it's a really important question, maybe less so specific to your exact answer, right. which I, I promise not to dodge. But why is the SEC picking winners and losers? Yeah. Why is a government entity deciding this is a winning one, which by the way happens to be have you know some pros and cons, you know, massive power consumption, which isn't great for a climate agenda that Gary Gensler cares a lot about. But being silent about other things, and then you know one of the challenges right now is Gary Gensler, who's been asked specifically about ETH, hasn't commented. E e e e but if it's so clear, if the laws are so clear, and he's asked this specific question, then just answer the question because it's clear. Hey, uh, Liz, I also asked him about XRP. Would he ever settle? He said no way. Um, they he might settle, but it, uh, it can't be XRP declared a security, or uh, and that's. That is a, that is a no go. So he he's gonna fight this thing. If the SEC wants to declare X, XRP a security, they won't operate in the U.S. And that is the basis, right? Ripple already said themselves that they will they will operate outside of the United States in regards to what they are trying to really kind of accomplish within their goals. But they also are mentioning the idea that Gary Gensler does not want to give a clear summary of why Ethereum and Bitcoin are not, you know, securities or currencies, whatever the case may be. And it's the idea that we want clear answers and we can't get those clear answers, even though they are clearly attacking the same investors that they strive to protect on a day-to-day -day basis, they say. But also, it's the idea that, from my standpoint, I am seeing the SEC pretty much want a money grab from individuals. They want to sue these companies so that they can get a settlement, get paid, and that's it. I don't know what is happening. I think that this needs to get looked into. I think that there needs to be an investigation because we could technically be seeing something where there is money laundering happening from these massive settlements in court. I don't know. Listen, that's just me kind of being a tin foil hat wearer and kind of speculating a little bit. But we obviously know that they want a money grab. Why else would they want $1.3 billion to settle with Ripple uh, or XRP, whatever, when we see them settling with exchanges and stuff for like $1.3 million? It's obviously a money grab, you know, instance here. Now, also, I really, I really quickly want to just address something that I uploaded yesterday. Now, I uploaded this article here where it was Ripple partners with Ghana fintech firm Waya to bolster instant payments across Africa. Now, the funny thing about this, okay, is the fact that we got this update today. 
Ghana seeks to ensure e, uh, e SETI, I believe. I hope that I said that right. If I didn't, I apologize. You guys will obviously correct me in the you know comments. But digital currency can be used offline. Now, this is great to see because this goes hand in hand with what we addressed in regards to the XRP ledger. The XRP ledger transactions can now be initiated offline. What is XPOP? Now, of course, we go all the way back to 2020 of May, and we see Ripple partners with Ghana fintech firm Waya to bolster instant payments across Africa. Then we see them doing, you know, uh, an ESETI, you know, which will be essentially their CBDC to be used offline. And of course, all in the same span of XPOP, which is offline settlements or transactions. You know, I'm just going to say right now, when you connect the dots and you connect the breadcrumbs, a lot of this goes hand in hand with what we are seeing, you know, happening right now in terms of innovation at Ripple and XRP, or I should say at Ripple with XRP. And I think that this is what we are going to be seeing a lot of, you know, without confirmation that they are working with Ripple. Of course, there's probably NDAs and stuff like that going on behind closed doors. But it's still the idea that there's a lot of breadcrumbs that boil down to CBDCs and, you know, all of these nice cross-border payment, you know, transactional data flows and stuff like that that lead all the way back to Ripple and XRP, which I find very interesting. And when you really kind of do a deep dive on the connections going all the way back to May of 2020, and then we do see something like this, which is, I should say, 12 days after this article came out, which I, th I find funny. Um, but overall, you know, it, it doesn't matter because when we look at what's happening around the world, we are seeing CBDCs really kind of come into the idea of, you know, being majorly adopted and innovated with around the world. And I'm fairly excited to see what, you know, Ripple and XRP does play a role in with this because we already know their end goal, you know, with the whole idea of, you know, essentially working with Swift or just working against Swift in, a sen in essential ways of pretty much bringing that ODL services around the entire world. We already seen ODL services ramping up over the over the summer months as well as going even back to 2020. So I'm very excited for the future of ODL. I'm also very excited for the future of digital payments and CBDCs. As you guys already know, I'm holding a lot of ISO 222 tokens that do play a key role within that aspect. So I'm fairly excited for that nonetheless. Um, so with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. If you guys do want more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, if you guys do want more content, you guys could always check out my website, ncashofficial.com. But with that being said, I hope that you all have a beautiful day, a beautiful night. Wherever you guys are, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.